you for joining us today. This is We've Got Issues, and I'm Nancy Furness. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizens-based forum where we look at topics of interest to the Tri-Cities. Um, and I'd like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for making these interviews possible. And today we're interviewing on-site at Fountainhead Networking in Port Coquitlam. Before we get started with today's interview, I just would like to acknowledge that our interview is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory territories of the Quiquitlam First Nations. And we thank the Quiquitlam First Nations who continue to live and care for these lands and waters and all that is above and below. So today I have joining me um, Sarah Harford and she is running for uh, City Council in Port Coquitlam. So thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's great to have you out here and to see another woman running for city council. Um, I would like to just sort of start by getting to know you a little bit better and, and learning a little bit about your background, um, what you bring to the table as far as city council, and um, maybe just how your background uh, might serve you well as a city councillor. So tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, well, I have lived in Port Coquitlam for six years. Prior to that, I have lived across the world in many different cities, um, many cities in Canada. And as soon as I moved to Port Coquitlam, I just felt mm -hmm. the welcomeness, the, the ease of walking down the streets and meeting people and bringing my family in here. And this is where we want to raise our children. So what is it you think um, about Port Coquitlam that really sort of grabbed you? Like, what are, what are the qualities of Port Coquitlam that you really um, find valuable and that you really enjoy? Number one is the people. Everywhere I go, everybody is friendly. You. Second is the culture of the city. It does feel like I'm living in a small town. Uh, you can walk a lot of different places, which is nice. There's lots of beautiful parks. The schools are great. The downtown core is great. Well, that's, uh, I'm just curious. You said you lived in cities throughout the world. Can yep. you, I, I'm just out of my own <laughs> curiosity. Yeah. Where have you lived? I was living in Japan for a year and then I was traveling throughout Europe, um, Asia, Mongolia, Russia, Eastern mm -hmm. Europe for about two years. So you've seen a lot of places that most of us have not. Yeah. Um, and what your experiences there, um, how do they sort of influence what you think about where you're living now? It's kind of funny when I first moved to BC, driving down the highway and I saw the big sign that says, most beautiful place in the world. And I oh. thought to myself, I've been to a lot of beautiful places. That's a pretty big call to make mm -hmm. on a big mm -hmm. sign. Yeah. And now living here, every day I am just amazed at the different views when I get out and explore, whether it's the mountains, the ocean, it's just amazing. So I think seeing all of that, learning about all the different cultures, really has helped me decide that Poco is where I want to be. So what is your favorite view? My favorite view? Yeah. Because there's quite a few in Port Coquitlam. There is. I mean, the top of Minicata is gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Colony Farms, different view, but just as gorgeous. Right. So do you get out on the trails and um, get out and explore the city? I know um, you mentioned, I think, on your webpage, maybe, that you're a mother. Yes. So you've got kids. Yes. Um, what do they, like, what is in Port Coquitlam for them? We've got three kids, um, and they are, my son just started lacrosse, which I didn't realize was so big in Port Coquitlam. I'm learning oh. a lot, okay. and he is loving it with the new rec center. has just been amazing okay. supporting that. Uh, the kids and I, yep, hikes, biking, walking. We've also got a dog, so have to get him outside all the time. And it's fun exploring all the different trails that Poco has. Yeah, there's no shortage of places to explore no. locally, so we are extremely fortunate mm -hmm. um, in times of COVID and, and things. We, we were really lucky, yeah. I think, to, to live in such an environment. So um, as far as running for city council, can you tell us why, um, what inspired you or who inspired you to run? Yeah, absolutely. Um, about 
two years ago, the POCO BIA, the Business Improve Improvement Association, invited me to join their board. So I've been sitting with them for about a year and a half and just learning about mostly the downtown, mm -hmm. but a lot of different things in Port Coquitlam. And being in the know is what I am thriving on. I love knowing what's going on, new businesses coming to Poco, new people looking for jobs, helping can make those connections. Then about a year and a half ago at the same time, I was voted into my strata council in my oh complex, <laughs> <laughs> or voluntold as I, they told me. <laughs> uh, and the same thing, being in the know, knowing what's going on mm -hmm. in the complex, getting to know each and every neighbor in there, mm -hmm. and just wanting to support them, connect them with everything that they need. So I thought, what a better way to serve my community but to join City Council. Right, so it sounds like you have some background that will um, could potentially be helpful in a role um, should you be successful to get yeah. onto City Council. Um, what have you been doing so far to prepare? Oh, definitely talking, talking to as many people as I can, current council, current mayors, former mayors, former council, Everybody I meet, I meet a lot of people, but I'm always out there, hi, what do you do? And can you tell me your experiences with everything? What advice have they been giving you or what <laughs> tips have they given you anything that you've been able to use? It's been absolutely amazing. This started with telling one person, I should just run for city council. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of left it. And about a week later, they came back to me and said, so you're running, right? Oh. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I guess that was they maybe. Hmm. And then it just kind of snowballed and every single person I've told so far has been so supportive, whether it's tips or I need to introduce you to this person or hmm. you need to meet this group or you need to come here. Everybody has just been so supportive. So I feel just getting out there, chatting, going to local events, reading up on the current city council meetings okay. has been very helpful. So you're getting a feel for what goes on sort of from week to week at City yeah. Council and what some of the issues may are may be. Mm -hmm. um, what are you hearing? You said that you're talking to people. What are you hearing as being um, issues as far as people, what are people interested or concerned about um, just in the community? Yeah, uh, the community is happy with where the city is going is the impression that I'm getting and that's what excites me the most. POCO is growing mm -hmm. and we are kind of the leaders in different aspects with um, the alcohol in the park projects, the, um, lots of different things around the city and other cities are looking at us and seeing how we're figuring it out, navigating it and then taking it on for themselves. So people are excited about the change that's coming. The rec center was huge. Mm -hmm. You go there and everybody is so happy to see that. It was a big project. It was a big project, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So if, um, can you just tell us what maybe your top three priorities would be? Um, if you get on council, what, what would be your goals? What would you like to see happen? My goals, I think, first of all, would be <laughs> Getting to know what are the topics that are really, that takes up council's majority time. Because mm -hmm. it's hard to know exactly what they're doing. But I want to know, I want to do research and then form opinions and work with the council and keep create, moving it in the right direction. The direction I feel is the right direction. Um, I want to definitely make sure we keep working on our downtown core. Right. We have such a uh, different feel from a lot of other places and I want it to keep being that magical small town when you walk down the street. Right and I think I read somewhere you said our downtown is something special but we need to do more so that's kind of what you're saying here is that the downtown core is a very special mm -hmm. um, sort of space. Can you tell me what makes it so special? The businesses, the people that run those businesses, the care that everybody puts into keeping their storefronts clean, their back alleys clean, bringing in different unique stores that are going to attract people from all over the Tri-Cities or further to come here and check them out. So as far as, um, I guess, your experience on the BIA and learning about small businesses, um, what 
can you do as a city councillor to attract um, small business to Port Coquitlam and to um, help them to thrive once they're here? And what kind of, oh, so I'll just stop there. <laughs> I've got lots of questions. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think it is working on, um, hmm. That's a good question. Well, there's <laughs> think lots. about that for a minute. There is a lot. There's a lot to think about, yeah. for sure. Yeah. With the city. Um, it's really, I think, leasing, renting agreements, subsidizing, helping small businesses thrive, mm -hmm. I think, was what I can help the most with. And what kind of small businesses would you like to see come to Port Coquitlam? I know you don't know, you won't have total control, but yeah. what would your vision be um, as far as the types of businesses that you'd like to attract? Um, unique stores, I think okay. one-off stores. You know, we don't want the big chains coming and taking over. You know, place where you can maybe go browse for clothes. You can go get your hair done. You can have a cup of coffee. You can have lunch. You can have a beverage. And just walking and window shopping. So restaurants and patios yeah. and um, would Shaughnessy Street change in any way? Um, I know there's a lot of traffic going yeah. through Shaughnessy Street. Do you Transportation. see? Transportation, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there some way to maybe um, change that? Because that would really contribute to a pedestrian friendly yeah. sort of atmosphere and, and shopability and, yeah. and stuff. Um, I think we'd have to look at all the different options available with uh, COVID, how other mm -hmm. um, restaurants and coffee shops, breweries were giving, given small outdoor patios. Right. I think what they did was amazing for those places and we can work on finding ways that we can. So you'd like to see more of that, the outdoor patios and. From um, what I hear, people are so ecstatic to be outside. Yeah. You know? Well, I think after COVID, <laughs> getting outside, and then with all our rain this spring, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I think everybody is really, really um, anxious to get outside yeah. and, and enjoy that outdoor experience. Yes. Um, I guess one of the things, you said that the downtown core is special, but that we need to do more. So what more do we need to do? Like, what would you like to see? What further changes or improvements would you like to see? in the downtown core? Bringing those unique businesses, um, keeping it clean, mm -hmm. keeping the parking accessible, the streets accessible for cars, pedestrians, just keep going with where I feel like it's right there and then just keep going. Okay. Um, one of the things for Port Coquitlam, one of the things that I personally find really is a big aspect of the small town charm are the big trees and the green spaces downtown mm -hmm. and, and throughout the city, really, but the downtown core. And over the past several years, we've seen a lot of big trees come down um, with this open plaza concept that sort of seems to be permeating throughout the core. Mm -hmm. We've seen, I think, close to 200 largely healthy, mature trees come down. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? I think that not knowing all of the details on why all of the trees had to come down. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, I mean, I love this, the big trees. My neighborhood is full of the big trees. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's a warm, comfortable feeling to have those. And I really don't want to lose them unless there is major concerns mm -hmm. or issues that So a major rising. concern or issue would be, what would be an example? like? If safety the trees are, or, yeah, safety, if okay. the trees are sick, okay. if their roots are causing problems, you know, there's so many factors to take yeah. in. And yeah, we should be able to find a happy yeah. medium and planting new trees too for the trees that were taken down. Yeah, so I think some new trees have been planted, mm. but of course they don't ever replace yeah. the, the big giants that were there. Yeah, not um, anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, another aspect about the downtown is I think you might have mentioned safety, um, keeping it safe. And um, how? what are your thoughts on, on how we keep the downtown safe and accessible? Um, and what do you mean by safety? Like. Yeah, I, if you could just maybe expand a Safety. little bit on that. Yeah, um, definitely working 
on the BIA board and learning about the different areas in the downtown or throughout Pogo that are have some safety concerns, it's keeping things clean. It's okay. lights. It's people not being afraid to say hello to each other. Mm -hmm. Those are big things. When you see somebody, talk to them. See how they're mm -hmm. feeling. Don't be afraid to reach out to authorities if you need help with anything. It's just that visual awareness of what's going on around you. Right. The businesses need to do that. Our residents need to do that. Everybody needs to just be watching out for each other. And so is there a role that the municipality could play in promoting that kind of message? I think we can definitely advertise that, <laughs> yes, and get out there. And, you know, we do have the community members that walk around and check on things and, yeah. Okay. Um, another area that I think it's it's throughout the Tri-Cities, and, and we had a, um, a short discussion earlier about this, is housing affordability. You're a mom with some kids that mm -hmm. are growing up in the community, and you expressed that you would like to see them be able to stay in, in Port Coquitlam yeah. and not have to move further and further out. Um, how do you think we can afford... I, I know it's a big question, <laughs> yeah. but what are your thoughts on affordability and how do we keep things affordable and accessible in Port Coquitlam? Like what can we do here? That is a big question. I wish I could solve it for everybody, but I can't, but I do want to work on trying. I have three kids and I don't want them to have to move mm -hmm. out if they don't want to move farther out um, in the lower mainland. So I think it's working with the community, working with the developers, working with the um, the city, everybody, and seeing how we can accommodate for everybody's needs. So do you think we should maybe be asking more of developers? Um, I don't know about that yet. <laughs> yeah. I know um, Port Coquitlam maybe doesn't have quite as much development going on, yeah. but um, of course it's an issue in all of the Tri-Cities. And, you know, are there other housing options that you think might work if, you know, not necessarily big developments, but is there something else that you would like to see to address affordability? Just as far as options go, housing options? Yeah, I think we have to have options for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, single family homes, apartments, low income. Yeah. Housing for everybody needs to be accessible. Yeah, and I'm just going to circle back to um, sort of natural spaces and stuff because that's mm -hmm. something that Port Coquitlam is really well known for. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned about going out and getting on the trails and enjoying the outdoor spaces and, mm -hmm. and the views and stuff. And we really do have a, a beautiful community. Um, what Are we doing enough to protect our natural spaces, do you think? That is, I think, a very good question for everybody. and. All of the world <laughs> yeah. um, but definitely we do need to keep our parks and protect mm -hmm. them keep the everything there um, and then always looking at new ways to add small green spaces especially with apartments and small housing you see at Gates Park how many people are outside just sitting there reading a book mm -hmm. we need to keep those areas for them so maybe find some creative solutions to add Bits, yeah, little bits of green, green spaces. Space. Yeah, yeah. I know in Vancouver they have um, they call them parklets, and so they've parklets? turned yes, yeah, they've turned some back alleys into little park yeah. spaces, and and they're just they're small, but it kind of um, creates that green space in between. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then um, another area that I guess with kids you were talking about lacrosse and sports. How important do you think sports are to Port Coquitlam and? Um, are there enough sports facilities or too much or? <laughs> <laughs> sports are very important for children, adults. Everyone needs space to play the sports. I think that we've got a really good mix between with the new pickleball courts at the rec center. And Have you tried that? No, no. I haven't tried I haven't it, but I really either. want to. <laughs> it looks fun. We play softball in Poco at all the different parks. Oh, okay. And every evening we're out there, we see kids soccer, badminton, bocce ball, the pickleball, everything. Cornhole is a big one now. Right. But yeah, we need to keep these spaces. I think there is enough sports 
things. There's always room for more if we can fit it in and keep it going. You've just sort of given a wide diversity of, <laughs> of sports options there. So. Yeah. Um, do you think, uh, um, like, with how Port Coquitlam is changing and evolving, and there's a lot of young families here right now, mm -hmm. do you think we're doing enough for um, our vulnerable population? We do have a population that's um, without homes, mm -hmm. and we've seen them even in the downtown core. Do you think we're doing enough to help them, or is there something we can do to help them? From a municipal level. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I personally, yes, I can help. I want to help everybody. Um, municipal, I think that there's always options and room and decisions that need to be made on how we can help and what's mm -hmm. the best way we can help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if you get on city council, mm -hmm. it would be really exciting, but it would also be super busy. It would be. Um, how are you going to balance all these? <laughs> You've got a lot of things on the go. You're engaged in the community. Mm -hmm. um, how, how are you going to find that balance? Um, we, I have a very supportive husband. My kids are that's so excited. That's really helpful that's because very if you helpful. don't have that, you're, yeah. you're in trouble. Right? Exactly. So that's good to hear. My children are so excited for me. I will, like I've always done, make time for things that are important mm -hmm. and make time for myself, make time for my family. But I'm really excited for this opportunity. Okay, and we always say make time for yourself. Yes. And yes, I'll make time for myself, but it doesn't always happen. No, right? it's, it's very always kind important. of the <laughs> bottom of the list. It yeah. seems to kind of fall off there. Um, so I'm going to switch gears again okay. and talk a little bit about the workplace. Um, it's something that um, Brad Nickerson, my co-host, and I always talk about in all of our ish all of our interviews, and it's respectful workplace. Mm -hmm. So you're going to potentially go into a situation where you're working with other counselors and a mayor and you may not always agree. Mm. Everybody's passionate, wanting to do the right thing, um, but maybe getting there by a different path. Um, and sometimes it can be contentious. So how, how do you plan on um, handling that or dealing with those potentially contentious issues? Mm -hmm. I think from being on the BIA, from being on my strata council, there's been a lot of conversations that aren't always to everybody's favorite topics, but it's listening. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing. You have to listen and do your research and understand that we have to be kind to everybody. Yeah. You know, my parents always said, treat others the way you want to be treated. Right. And I think that's very important. We don't always have to agree. Mm -hmm. But we always have to respect each other. So to stay open-minded, listen, mm -hmm. um, and be respectful. Yes. Okay. And, and also uh, holding on to your own opinions. Yeah. If you, you know, and standing there, but respectfully. Um, what would you do? Because if you're being respectful, then the expectation is that mm -hmm. you will receive respect back. What would you um, do? Like, how will you promote that sort of culture? Being an example, leading with that. Okay. There's been some, quite a bit of uh, conversation lately about, because we know that in the Tri-Cities there, there are lots of um, contentious issues and councils do grapple and deal with these. There's been a lot of talk about having an integrity commissioner or an ethics commissioner um, at the munis at the provincial level, mm -hmm. so, so to have some oversight, so when these really contentious issues come mm -hmm. up and they can't be resolved at the municipal level, that there's a third party oversight, somebody who can step in and, and help to um, sort those issues out. Is that something that you would support? Mm -hmm. Or if you have another idea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know the answer to that question at the moment. Something I would have to research and learn about before I could come up with an opinion. I think that, again, working together and there's always disagreements that humans have with each other and, yeah, yeah working through it the best we can. 
And I think you're not expected to have all the yeah. answers, of <laughs> course, at, at this point. And, um, you know, stepping up to council for the first time is a big step mm -hmm. and it's a learning process. Um, how, what have you learned so far? Like, how are you learning about um, being council? Have you reached out to certain people? And um, Yeah, I've communicated with quite a few of the current council and the mayor and uh, previous council members and previous candidates who run, who didn't run, going to different events being held where I first met you and learning about other people's experience in their campaigning mm -hmm. and what they did, what worked for them, what didn't work for them and just getting as much information as I can from everybody and deciding what I think is the best route for me. Right. And yep. so have you been out door knocking and, and are you planning on going out door knocking? I haven't been door knocking yet, but I definitely will be out there very soon, going around meeting different communities, different people, different orga organizations, and yeah. Well, that sounds like you're well on your way oh, and you. um, you've got a lot of work ahead of you and some exciting times and um, October will come up very quickly. Yes. Um, I have one last question for okay. you and it's a general question. And again, you may not, <laughs> I don't yeah. expect you to have the 100% of an answer for this, but in our municipal elections, mm -hmm. we have been seeing about 25 or 26% of the population coming out and voting. Mm -hmm. So three quarters of the people aren't even coming out to vote. What are your thoughts on that? How can how can we encourage more people to take interest at the municipal level and get out and vote? Mm -hmm. I am always shocked to see those numbers. I think that municipal is where change starts. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get out and vote, then you aren't making a difference. You can't, it's hard. I think just again, educating people, getting the word out, saying how, it, how important it is to vote, how lucky it is that we can vote is very important. So just telling as many people as I can, vote. And I think you kind of hit the nail on the head in saying that at the municipal level, that's where change happens. Mm -hmm. That's where the change happens that affects you and me directly. Exactly. Right? It's the probably the place where we have the most power to make the change. Mm -hmm. So when people don't come out, it, it's, it's really, it is frustrating. It is frustrating. But yeah. But I think we're just about ready to close. I'm getting signals that we've reached the end of our time <laughs> awesome. here. So I'd like to thank you very much for coming out and joining us and, and sharing a little bit about who you are and, and what your priorities are. And we'll wish you all the best in thank your you. campaign. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us on We've Got Issues. And um, we were talking today with Sarah Harbord. She's running for Port Coquitlam City Council. And we'd also like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for making sure that these interviews go ahead. So thank you.